Oh, I think you just have to start and we'll just, <coughs> just fall in, right? Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Let's, get, let's see. This is the year of our core values. It's more of our core values. We're doing fluidity, flexibility, and focus this month. <clears throat> then lots of lots of interesting things mentioned. You know, I go home and think about them every week. And something new to think about. I love the way we all all share our thoughts and our feelings. Mm. So today, right after service, we're going to have a short annual meeting. Please stay if you're interested. It's not mandatory. You can run out the back door if you'd like. Ah, so are you going to play some for meditation? Well, we're going to have Lori play some music, and then we're going to go straight into meditation. Um.
very gently become aware of my voice again. Pulling all of your consciousness back down through your head and into your body, anchoring it to your feet, being grounded, and secure, and at peace. There is only God. And in the beauty of this nine, I know that God is, we are, and all is well. When you're ready, please open your eyes. Hmm. Our meditations just get better and better and better. We have such a great spiritual family. And now it's my honor to introduce John Lalonde, who's going to come up and give us a spiritual thought. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, John. Good morning. Nice to see all, all of you. We missed last week, and it feels like a long time ago. But, um, okay, thank you. How's this? There you go. All right. Um, we have the three themes this month, focus, flexibility, and fluidity, reorder to fit my talk. Um, and I was thinking about them and thinking, which one do I want to talk about? You know, what's coming in? And a sentence or two came on each one of them. So I'm going to do kind of a, a coverage of all of the themes in a brief sort of way. These spiritual thoughts, as we know, are to include some uh, personal aspect. And I'm, the first thing I'm going to talk about is actually more personal than it's been for me in, in you know, actually ever from up here. But um, so I, my focus, uh, first I want to talk about focus, is on an intense family drama that has uh, occurred in my life. And I'm not going to go into the details, but I was verbally confronted by a relative family member in a very angry and uh, aggressive, <laughs> aggressive way. I felt totally misunderstood uh, and, and verbally assaulted and kind of traumatized by it, just kind of knocked way off my, my center with it. Uh, initially, I was surprised by this kind of reaction to me, and that surprise kind of gave way to, whoa, this person is very angry with me. There is a lot of pent up anger, a lot of vitriol there. It was, it, it was real powerful. So I've, I've settled a lot of that in myself. And that is with the help of actually many of you individually, and some of the groups here, I, I've talked about some of these issues and have appreciated the feedback uh, that I've gotten there. But I was having, even though I've settled it, and it's not bugging me at 4am and you know, that kind of thing. Um, I still was not getting to the place of forgiveness. I, I was not having forgiveness in my heart. I was having my anger and retribution and all this ugly stuff that comes up as we protect ourselves. Um, and forgiveness. So I had a meeting. We had a meeting, uh, ministers and practitioners. It was a wonderful meeting where Reverend Angelo Pazello, right over here, um, had a really nice statement about forgiveness. And that was that to see the God force in all, just to see the God force in all. And that just really cut through it. I know that. I know that about, you know, this person, myself, you know, all of us. Um, but to see the God force uh, in all. And this word all, I, I really like it. It is self. It is others. It is all events, all occurrences. See the God force in everything. And so this see the God force for me is the spiritual focus that really helped me with this issue of forgiveness, but I think is a wonderful sort of mantra for us every day. So that's focus. Um, flexibility, and now I will lighten it up a, a little bit. Um, when I announced the flute circle at the beginning of the month, um, as I was walking up here, it occurred to me that the flute circle is a lot like the themes that we have each month. And I just sort of glibly said, the focus is on having fun. Um, the fluidity is the sort of music that we want to make together. And uh, the flexibility is necessary because mistakes will be made. And um, 
I made a, a fairly significant mistake at this at the flute circle a couple months ago. We had two guitar players show up, and I got really excited about that. That oh my goodness, we can play along with flute or with uh, with guitars. So we set up a little exercise for two people, two flute players, to play duets while trying to play along with a guitar. And given you know the number of people and the relative experience level that did not work it was really too hard one flute one guitar that has a chance of uh some <laughs> fluidity some 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 ni nice music um so flexibility here um I, I just was thinking what is the spiritual message behind the flexibility that's required to kind of facilitate something move it along make it fun make it you know beneficial beneficial to people. And I thought, you know, we, as we know, we are flowing forth in divine perfect timing. And so our flute playing in the flute circle is flowing forth in divine perfection. Our flute playing is divine perfection. Also the, the squeaks, the, you know, the other things we learn about or work into something, it's all divine perfection. So second Saturdays, 2 to 3.30, you're all invited. So the last thing I want to talk about is, is fluidity that um, we heard many talks, this many good talks this is the last Sunday of the month. So we've had the accumulation of many good talks. We heard Reverend Sandy uh, talk about fluidity as the constant movement and constant change in our lives. So uh, we also heard Reverend Bob talk about what we focus on takes precedence. And by learning to put that focus down through meditation, you know, for example, through meditation or intentional breathing, we let we can let go of that intensity of the focus and go dive deeper into the divine and open ourselves up to all the possibilities in the universe. So those are some really nice lessons that we've we've heard um, in, in this month. So last week, um, Joyce and I and our dog were able to take our trailer and go camping on the Mendocino coast. And um, as I sat there watching the ocean waves, knowing that the tide was coming in and the tide creeping further up on the, on the sand, glistening in, in the sunlight, I just was thinking, what is this? And I started to think about fluidity. And I, I, I will admit that if I didn't have a spiritual thought in a week, I'd probably been thinking about lunch, but I was thinking about fluidity. <laughs> and um, so when I shut my eyes and meditated a little bit and, and, um, uh, and then sort of let go of it, what struck me was the pulse, the pulse of, of, of the waves. You know, some were big, some were loud, some were soft and kind of lingering. Um, but they were all, there was a rhythm to it. There was a, a pulse. And this wasn't a, a metronome rhythm, but this was the perfect rhythm of nature that, um, that I, I thought, I realized in the moment, this, this is God, this is divine. This is the universe in the way that, that it is working for us. This constant pulsing, this constant changing, this always presence is our divine spirit. And this fluidity, the, the flow, this flow is the natural state of this precious life. And so it is. I love our spiritual thoughts. They really give you different ways to look at things and to think about it. And they're always profound. Ah. Now, Lori, we're going to do some more music? Cool. Oh, and Cowboy John's going to help her. Good. My co-partner co here. Good morning, all you bright and shiny souls out there. Good morning. Guitars are fluid also. 
<laughs> so depending on the weather. <coughs> This is a song uh, written kind of back in the probably 80s, I think. Very taking carpenter. Reverend Joe will up to give us our sermon today. Ah, look at me. Ah, I feel lucky. Isn't that song someplace that I hear you say you had the devil and the waitress in your car? <laughs> oh, that's the devil. Yeah, that would have been really good. That's what I heard. <laughs> I was just trying to confirm. Well, that's, that's cool. Sometimes the words just kind of come out. I'm very fluid. Yes, you are. You're very fluid. Oh, my God, are you fluid. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, I, too, want to talk about focus. Um, I, I mentioned last week while I was hosting that my day kind of goes okay or no good, 
depending on where I'm with God, you know, with God or without God, with God or without God. And I try to catch myself when I'm trying to do something without God and things just don't go as well. But um, I let that be our, my focus is with God as constantly as possible. I mean, God is always there for us. We know this. God is always, always available and present. And God always says yes to us. <clears throat> Reverend Lawrence said, we cannot separate ourselves from God's source because God is a pillar to me. God is the pillar. God never moves. We might move away from God. Don't need your help today, God. Not thinking about you today. I'm just going on my own. But God is always right there. And that's what gives me great peace to know that God is always my supply right there. Sometimes I get focused on a project or something I'm deciding I want to do. And it's not going so well sometimes. I'm just struggling trying to figure out. I haven't done this before, but hey, I'm a smart guy. I'll figure this out. And I keep working and working and it's just not going well. So then I remember to focus on God first. I step back and I'm thinking about, come on, I can do this. And with God's assistance, I can do this. And it's still not going so well. So I start talking to God. And God is a very funny, funny entity, if you don't know that already. At least my God is in my head. I said, God, I, I need your help. And God said to me, oh, sure, now you want my help. And I go, well, yeah, I do. So, but I, I found out through God's guidance that all our direction can be with God through God and make our days so much easier, no matter what it is that we're dealing with. Um, and I've always said this and always believe that for every problem, there is a solution. There just is, no matter how big that problem might be, there is a solution. And my prayers with God has always returned me what I needed in a problem. Reverend Michael Beckwith, he's a minister, many minister down in uh, Culver City at the Agape Church. We've been down there several times, and if you guys haven't been to the Agape Church in Culver City, I encourage you to go. It's a very uplifting place, just like, just like makes me feel like I'm home, like I do here. It's just a wonderful place to be. He said, when we take time to focus our attention on our intention, we start to see answers that we didn't see before. Because we get all caught up in the muck of the day sometimes. We just get rolling and rolling and all of a sudden we're, we're finding ourselves just not, not going so well. We're not in a very good mood for whatever reason. So we need to stop and we can stop. We go back into prayer or meditation. Because we can always trust in God's source, always. Then our intention becomes clear. Focus. This focus reminds me of the story of in the book of uh, Daniel in the Bible. Daniel was, was, the king got very upset with Daniel, thinking that Daniel had done something wrong and disobeyed him. So he threw Daniel into the lion's den where other people had been tossed before. And Daniel was on his knees, his hands and knees, and he sits back and he looks skyward and there's this ray of light beaming down on him. And these lions were all around him. And he knew that was God talking with him or connecting with him. And so he went into prayer with God. So he focused his attention on God and not, not the circumstance he was involved in. He stayed calm. He stayed uh, very, very serene and felt very safe. And because he was doing that, so did the, the lions never touched him. The lions were very calm as well. And they never touched him. And he was able to get out of the, of the den in that situation without, without being harmed. Now that's focus. I've learned through science of mind that God's source is not connected to any religion. And I like that. I like learning that. One of the things I learned through science of mind is there are many paths and only one God. I love that. That means worldwide, God is there for all 
to connect with, however they connect with God. And I love that. God is pure love, knows no other thing. I've had people tell me and I've heard people say that the word God is a negative thing from past religious backgrounds. And I understand that, I get that, because I grew up in a couple of different religious settings that were very negative and quite scary actually, about this angry God and this mean God. And, and I just decided to, that wasn't, that wasn't working for me, so I walked away from those religions. And then I found science of mind. So I didn't connect God as a negative thing with my previous religions. And we need not do that because God doesn't know anything but love for us and everything on this planet. Let that be our focus. Reverend Bob says sometimes we need to unfocus to help open us up at the top. And I agree. We sit down, we can meditate or pray or just to start thinking about God and everything opens up at the top, doesn't it? All these loving ideas, all these great ideas are now released into us because they were already there. We just needed to open to focus and see them. So yes, I agree that we need to unfocus at the top. It broadens our horizons and ideas come to us so much easier. Allows God's source to give us clear cut answers that we're looking for. Everything we need is already here on this planet. We already know this. We just focus on what we want and the answer comes to us clearly. If we stop getting in our own muck and stop and wake up. We trust in God's source in all circumstances. We are simply asking for direction from our source because God is 24 seven with us. We know this. I was working as a detective years ago. It was a 190 degree day. And I'd worked since six o'clock that morning. And it was about, I don't know, about 5.30 or so in the afternoon. It was hot, I'm sticky, I'm sweaty. And we all got through with what we were doing for the day. And I was heading home from the airport area where our headquarters was for our, our team. And my sergeant called me and says, oh, look, I need you to go out to Oliva 99, which is clear across town, if you know Fresno. So I need you to go out there and assist CHP with a, with a car stop. They have a couple of guys in custody and they found narcotics in the car. It was the last thing I wanted to hear. I was deadbeat, tired, hot and sweaty. I just wanted to go home and sit in my pool and maybe have something cold to drink. But what do you do? Your sergeant says you go, you go. I just said, okay, and hung up the phone. So I'm blasting off over to 99 and Olive, and I'm going on First Avenue, coming up on Clinton Avenue. I'm doing about warp three, I think. And uh, just mad, just mad as a hornet and ticked off. Why me? Why did he call me? Why couldn't he call somebody else? And just as I'm approaching the intersection, something turned my head and told me to look to my left. And I did. And I saw this little bus stops, you see them with a little bit of canopy over them and a little stand place where you can sit. Doesn't give you much cooling on a 109 degree day, but I saw that and I saw this woman maybe in her early 40s walking toward that bus stop area. She had a sun hat on and a, and a pretty little spring dress. She had her hand or arm like this and she was carrying her purse and a, and a, and a bouquet of flowers. And I looked to the other side and her arm was laying limp on the other side and so was her leg and she was dragging her leg to get to the bus stop. And she had a smile on her face. Now I saw all this in a microsecond, okay? And I'm looking at that going, oh my God, the one you made me look over here. I needed to see that. She had a smile on her face. This woman was, was dragging herself to the bus stop to get the bus and go out and make somebody else's day with a bouquet of flowers is what I had in my head. And what a great focus moment for me. And man, did it just completely turn me around. I just started going, thank you, God. I even started crying as I'm driving. I'm like, thank you, God, I really needed to see this. By the time I got over to help CHP, I was in a great mood. I think I the guys for their duty and their stuff. I said, good job. 
My other partner showed up to help me get done, and I didn't get home till about 10.30 that night. But it was a lot more positive because of what I had seen in a microsecond of somebody else showing that all is good, no matter the circumstances. Because I, I changed my focus from my circumstance to God. <coughs> really makes a difference in our days, folks. By the way, this planet owes us nothing. Absolutely owes us nothing. God made this planet, and he made everything on this planet. Us, his four-legged animals, everything. It's all here for us. And he gave us the keys to his planet, says take care of it, and have fun and play, my children. And it was up to us to decide what we were going to do with our time on this planet, because we have our own will that was given to us. And I thought, isn't that great? Nobody owes me anything, but yet it's all provided for me. It's all provided for all of us to do with how we wherever it will. And it's up to us to find what we want along the way. All we need to do is stop our busy minds and focus our intention. The thing we want will appear when we focus on God's spirit in any given situation. If we just stop, and take time, meditate, pray, talk to God. Let that be our focus. As I said, you know, in the mornings, right out of bed, no, I'm not talking to God. I'm reaching for that first cup of coffee. Right? Gotta have that coffee first before I do anything else. And this percolating away, and I stagger down the stairs about five o'clock in the morning every day I get up, and I'm staggering down a little stairs down into our uh, kitchen area and my cats are following me and they get up with me and I'm having my first cup of coffee and then I sit and then I start talking to God because it's an opportunity to just be still and say thank you God for my health thank you for this day thank you for allowing me to be here again to be with my family to connect with friends and maybe help somebody today it's a great way to start your day, I swear. I know my day will be good because I start with giving things. My adventures in the day sometimes get tough. I get a little frustrated and I get a little guy. I go, okay, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to relax and I'm going to go within. Because we can do that anywhere we are, anywhere on this planet, can't we? And change our focus and change our minds. And it helps us deal with any situation that comes our way. Because God is that good, and so are we. Let that be our focus. And so it is. Thank you, Joe. Lots to think about today. Ah, can we have two people to come help with the offertory, please? Turn into two people. Okay, we've got, got someone. We've got someone to help you. You have a show. Oh, I do. <laughs> you got some. <laughs> <laughs> Say with me, please. Divine love, love flowing through me, me. blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you. And then on Zoom, uh, Missy shows everybody how to make their their uh, donations, and most of them do it through PayPal, which makes it really, really nice for us. Uh, let's see, our prayer partner this coming week is John Milan. So if you need a prayer, you bring it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Creeping back. Please stop and see John before you go today. Uh, do we have any announcements? <laughs> I should have stayed up there, right? <laughs> Please come up, Kim. <laughs> um, 
Actually, anyone that, okay, I'll wait, I'll get up here. Anyone that got a, excuse me, anyone that got a book or a CD, I have them with me today to give to you uh, from when Deva Bani was here. So um, I have a list of people. I gave one already to LJ, but uh, there's, I know Leo had some. I don't know, Jean, you needed to get a book. Okay, so I have them in the box at the back, so see me after the service. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Is there anyone on Zoom that needs to make an announcement? No, come on. <laughs> Laura, is there anyone on Zoom? No. Okay. Um, I just have to share something. When I was younger, I used to love testimony time or miracle time, but this is my manifestation time because I'm finally stepping into my own power and um, taking control of sometimes what I don't like and sometimes what I do like. And um, we just had um, a lot of work done to our house, plumbing. We've been go we had our roofing done. We're just spending lots of money, and I'm just blessed by it. Um, and we had three plumbers come out give us three different quotes and from 9,000 to 7,000, actually almost 8,000. So we're like, we got to do it. We got to buy the bullet. So um, we had these great people come and they were doing work. And it was just such a great experience. They were just there on time. They did what they said they were going to do. It was just everything ran so smoothly. And I was like, wow, this is great. I'm like, you know what? I bet it's not going to be that much. I bet it's going to be less. And I don't know why I had that thought, but I had that thought. And I was like, well, what could it be? And then I went to go pay him. I said, hey, I go, they had given us a quote for $7,800. And I said, okay, you know, should I write the check now? <laughs> and um, sorry, I'm shaking because I don't know why <laughs> so much energy. Um, and he said, no, we'll send a bill. And I'm like, oh, okay, we'll send a bill. I'm like, is that a good thing or a bad thing in my head? I didn't say that. I'm like, oh, that's a good thing. And I just grabbed onto the good thing. And I said, oh, it's going to be like, $5,500 that I could I could go for that and then um that weekend we had some friends come over it was when we had that was the meteor shower weekend when we had all the rain and I didn't get to see any meteors <laughs> I'm so bummed <laughs> but the miracle still came and uh I like to see miracle but I manifestation is is more of the science of mind because I'm taking ownership of it because I mean, I could have expected and written the check for 7,800 and he might have taken it. Um, Sunday night, my husband got the text and it was $5,519.20. And I was like, wow. And the thing, the other part of that too, is that we had an old refrigerator that came with the house. It was probably, I don't know, 20, 30 years old. And he said, hey, when are you guys gonna get a new refrigerator? Cause they piped the line for, for it. So. We're like, yeah, whenever we have the money. Well, the thing is, is that that $2,300 we saved bought our new refrigerator. There you go. <laughs> so there's my manifestation. Affordable <laughs> 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 I love good news. Isn't that great? <laughs> Any other announcements? Nope. Okay, I'm speaking next week. So let's go ahead and do the prayer protection, please. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is love. Laura, you got another song for us? Yeah, but you know, Sandy, we didn't ask if anyone new was here today. Is anyone new here today? Hello. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Let's put her on the spot. I'm Nancy. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, leave it to Lori. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect Let's yeah. give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Any other announcements? <laughs> nope. Cool. So, Laura, you're going to play a closing song for us? Oh, we've got two more. Yeah, well, well, let's do it. Yay. Okay. We still have 20 minutes. Yeah, we're going to go. We're going, we're going, don't watch your watch. We don't go to church to watch your watch. So, please, please do the music, and then we're going to do the annual meeting. Uh, <laughs>
Ah. Unless you have something you want to come talk about. Oh, I always do, but I better not. <laughs> <laughs> not today. John, come on. Oh, everyone is so off kilter today. Come on. We have to be fluid. <laughs> <laughs> Focus on fluidity. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So I actually wrote this song back in 2021 during COVID, and we were on Zoom at the time. I wrote it on the piano, and I did it on the piano then which I'm, I'm kind of new, I'm not really good on the piano. Well, I'm not really good on the guitar that much either, but the piano yes, is really are. harder for me to yes, concentrate on. <laughs> but anyway, so now I'm going to do it because I didn't want to carry my piano to work today, you know? So I thought, I'm just, I'm, so I transposed it and everything, and so now I do it on the guitar. So it's totally different, and it's called Message for Humanity.
So who are we? We are fractals of God, each and every one of us. Yes. And that's our higher self. That's who we talk to. When we're talking to God, we're talking to our higher self. And don't ever forget that. So I'm just going to do one last song. And it's a single, but it's not the song you're thinking about. Because <laughs> I don't want to do that every time. Right? Okay, not every time. John, this is the one that we couldn't figure That's out. Right. I'll stand over here. You know, it's, it's the easiest song in the world, and we just couldn't get the harmonica to play it. You can try them all you want. Well, okay, all right. Sometimes it works. From a distance. Yeah. Okay, so everyone sing along, sing loud. Singing is good for the soul. Yes. Because we are vibrational and frequencies. Yes. And we it connects us with source. Yes. So sing loud, even if you don't think you sing good. Even if you don't know the words, just sing it. Okay? Let me hear a big oh, amen. Feel free, but it won't won't take too terribly long. I saw somebody pick up their purse. 